Yo, what's up guys, welcome back to another video. This is a reaction to aerial refueling accidents examined. And I was asking in, I think, a reaction yesterday about this sort of scenario and how often it happens. And this video was suggested, and this is the channel that I've reacted to about, I think it was to do with the aircraft carriers. There was a recent reaction and I, I, I enjoyed that one. It was the history of aircraft carriers. And I really enjoyed that reaction. It was a really interesting, well put together video. And actually based off that i'm going to subscribe because i feel like this channel has got a lot of good videos related to this similar these similar topic topics but um yeah these sort of accidents i don't know how often these happen i don't know the severity of them i'm sort of just thinking they lead to fires but maybe that isn't the case i don't know what other things there would be but i'm almost certain i was almost certain that these things would happen because it's not like a thing set in place and also you're flying mid-air mistakes are going to happen but I don't know what the consequences are we're gonna see hopefully these videos aren't too brutal i mean i don't know what to expect but aerial refueling accidents in the air it can't go great it can't be a good outcome so i'm expecting it to be pretty brutal but we're going to check this out hopefully you're going to enjoy if you want more reactions like this more reactions from this channel or other channels out there let me know in the comments and i will try and react to them in the future i'm enjoying these military type reactions because it's something that i don't know anything about as you know and also there's so many different aspects to it i'm learning about the individual like aircrafts um helicopters all this all of those things then the weapons then the history of the wars that have happened i'm learning about things that i should have probably known before but i didn't i'll be honest i've never had like the intrigue in this sort of stuff when i was a kid all i cared about was i don't know what was on tv you know i was a typical kid who didn't really look into this stuff but i'm doing it now and i'm having the help of you commenting letting me know certain things and all that stuff in the comments which is really obviously helpful and it's nice building a community whilst doing this sort of thing but we're going to check this out hopefully you're going to enjoy let me know what other reactions you want to see next links are in the description to my patreon if you want to see some more of more of my reactions that i can't post to youtube for whatever reason and also there should be a playlist that pops up at the end of this video it's basically all my military reactions because i've done quite a few recently but way back there was a little period when I'd done a few, like, I guess, like a year ago. And I've tried to find them. And, yeah, if you want to see some of my older reactions, where I'm even more clueless, you can find them on the playlist that will pop up in the last 10, 20 seconds of this reaction. But, yeah, that's for those interested. And, yeah, let's just jump into this and see how how this video goes. I'm not... Uh, I'm hoping it's not too brutal. That's what I'm just praying for. Aerial refueling can go wrong. And at times, it can be deadly. Hoses breaking off, fuel spilling, and mid-flight collisions are oh. just some of the things that make aerial ref- the, the footage that this guy manages to get is crazy. I don't know how he does it. Is there like a website for this sort of stuff? Because in his aircraft carrier reaction, the video that I reacted to, there was some like footage from hundreds of years ago. And I don't know how you can find this footage. It's, I mean, it's crazy, but it's obviously stored somewhere, but I don't know how he gets all of it. Fueling dangerous. And as we dig deeper into what happened with each mishap, you may finally understand why aircraft can safely refuel with their engines running and in the presence of fuel leaks, while car engines need to be shut off in gas stations. But what happened when a helicopter ran out of fuel in the middle of a Category 1 hurricane is not what you think. What? Now that was close if you ask me, oh. but what actually went wrong? Any two large airplanes flying close by might find themselves in a dangerous situation. This is due to aerodynamic They are massive. Look, they're both huge. Forces experience when in proximity. In this case, the receiver aircraft was an E3 sentry. As contact was made, the E3 kept moving closer. And when the retract limit on the boom was reached, it auto disconnected. But the E3 was too close and too forward. So its bow wave pushed the tail of the tanker up. A bow wave is a shock wave that forms in front and around the aircraft, similar to a ship's bow wave, but for aircraft. As the tail of the tanker pushed up, the autopilot trim couldn't keep up and disengaged, causing oh. the tanker to descend downward toward the E3. Luckily, the E3 sentry quickly dived down, saving both aircraft. Oh my days. The CH-53 Sea Stallion is about to experience what it's like to become a Muslim or Jewish man. Mazel tov. I'm not a psychologist, but that's going to be one self-conscious stallion. See, the amount of turbulence behind a tanker aircraft is... Sub See, this must be hard because surely it'd be easy for the helicopter just to snap the refueling thing in half. Like, 
you get a bit of like the positioning wrong and it's just curtains you know essential so it's very easy to overcorrect. in this case the helicopter pilot actually got lucky because if the pilot hadn't pulled up that hard the drogue may have been caught in the rotor blades which could have been fatal oh. but what happened to the helicopter since it couldn't refuel anymore even if a helicopter runs out of fuel it should still be able to land using auto rotation as a helicopter descends with its engines off the rotors continue spinning simply by the upward flow of air through the rotor blades of course if you lose the ability to refuel over enemy territory or in the middle of a hurricane as you'll see things get a bit more complicated jeez that stallion may never boink again but you can when you oh. play Getting his money, you love to see it. Go on, man. Plashed by the hose, <laughs> you're gonna want to watch this one. After contact, the hose <laughs> went slack, which resulted in a whiplash. It's critical for the hose to stay fully extended at all times, otherwise, resonance can occur, which will oh. break off the drogue. Those other pilots are probably not too happy either. Let's hear the original audio. Tony, I told him to take it easy on the hose. When the hose breaks off, it can be sucked into the engine, but this F-14 was lucky. In a similar incident on board aircraft carrier USS Abraham Lincoln, an F-35C was damaged during an aerial refueling exercise when receiving fuel from an F-A-18. The aerial refueling basket was ingested into the F-35's intake. Bruh. Both aircraft were able to land safely, however, the damage to the F-35 was more than $2 million and was reported as a Class A mishap. But if you think $2 million is an expensive trip to the gas station, this next refueling incident cost the US Air Force more than $150 million. Oh my days. On September 29, 2020, a KC-130J and an F-35 were conducting aerial refueling using the probe and drogue method. But then, the unthinkable happened. The two aircraft collided mid-air. As the pilots later described, the whole thing lasted about a second. That's what she said. The pilot. It was so violent that the headsets flew off their heads. The F-35 pilot immediately ejected and safely descended as he watched his aircraft plummet into the ground, resulting in a giant fireball. Oh my god. Meanwhile, inside the K-130's cockpit, the pilots came to a shocking realization they still had control of the airplane. Pilots declared an emergency to the air traffic controllers, stating that their aircraft had collided with the F-35, they'd lost two engines, and they might even be on fire. For the next 12 minutes, the captain, along with the co-pilot, conducted an emergency descent and barely landed on a field in a remote area in California. I mean, fair enough. They've managed to land in that situation. You are insane. The collision had destroyed both of the KC-130's starboard engines, punched a hole in the plane, but left the primary flight control surfaces operational, which allowed the pilots to safely land. Wow. Additionally, the tanker was leaking fuel from the pods, but most of it, about 7,200 gallons, remained in the tanker during landing, because due to the time constraints and the possibility of fire, there was no opportunity to dump the fuel. Originally, the pilots intended to land in Jacqueline Cochran Regional Airport in Thermal, California. But 10 minutes after the collision, the aircraft made an uncontrolled right turn. As a result, the pilots decided to land in one of the cauliflower fields. According to the pilots, it wasn't like in the movies. It was relatively smooth and they came to a stop pretty quickly. All eight crew members made it out alive without any serious injuries. Fair enough. Both pilots later earned the Distinguished Flying Cross, the US military's second highest medal of valor that an aviator can get. This time, the crew were lucky. As you can see, pieces of the propellers missing. A few years prior to- This is what it looked- Oh my god. Crew were lucky. As you can see- They were literally flying with their propellers like that. Are you nuts? Nah, this is insane. How they've managed to control it. See pieces of the propellers missing. A few years prior to this incident, 16 personnel lost their lives when a corroded propeller blade came off mid-flight. Wow. But have you ever wondered why it's unsafe to refuel your car while the engine is running, yet aircraft are routinely refueled mid-flight? Not to mention fuel leaks and static electricity sparks that are frequently produced on initial contact of the tanker and the receiver aircraft. 
When refueling modern cars, turning the engine off is more of a precaution in order to minimize distractions. Just like how you shouldn't be on your cell phone while refueling, so you don't end up doing this. With that said, sometimes running a car while fueling can result in a fire, be it a hot catalytic converter or a side exhaust on older cars. As a rule of thumb, you want to turn off the engine, stay away from oh, your cell phone shit. and avoid smoking. And don't go in and out of the car because it could build up static electricity on your body and clothing and a spark can turn into a flame. Oh. You see, gasoline has a flash point of minus 50 degree Fahrenheit, while kerosene has a flash point of 100 degrees Fahrenheit. This fact alone makes kerosene much safer compared to gasoline. During aerial refueling, both aircraft are moving at high speeds, which means any spilled fuel dissipates quickly. Fuel is more than a dozen feet away from the heat of the engines, and biggest of all, up high, it gets cold. Roughly for each thousand meters, the temperature drops about five degrees Celsius, meaning that at an altitude of 5,000 meters, the temperature is 25 degrees Celsius lower than it is on the ground. That's a good point. This means that during aerial refueling, kerosene is way below its flash point. So sparks like this between the basket and the nozzle won't ignite anything, even okay. though sparks could generate as much as 10,000 volts. But that said, sparks could pose a serious threat to the avionics on board the aircraft. For this reason, all aircraft that engage in aerial refueling have an electronic pulse protection system installed to handle those static charges. The day before Halloween in 1991, an HH-60G Pavehawk helicopter with the call sign Jolly 110 headed out into a hurricane that became known as the Perfect Storm. And yes, there's a movie with the same name starring George Clooney. The mission of the five-man crew was to rescue a sailing vessel 250 miles offshore. A weather buoy offshore of Halifax, Nova Scotia detected a 100-foot wave, the largest ever recorded wave in that part of the Atlantic. As a result of severe weather, Jolly 110 was unable to finish the rescue mission and turned around. Jolly had already refueled three times from an HC-130 Hercules but had to do one more refueling to make it back to the mainland. The pilot attempted refueling more than 30 times, but due to extreme turbulence and lack of visibility, both drogues had been damaged. Unable to refuel, and with only 20 minutes left, the pilot decided to ditch the helicopter in the middle of the perfect storm, while the engines were still running. As four of the crew members jumped overboard, the Pavehawk was hit by a wave, and the chopper ended up in the water. The pilot was 15 feet underwater, but he was able to escape the sinking helicopter. At this point, the crew were stranded 90 miles offshore in 100 knot winds and 80 foot waves. Five hours later, US Coast Guard cutter Temeroa reached the crash site. Four airmen were rescued, but pararescue jumper Arden Rick Smith was sadly never found. Oh my days, what the hell? This is crazy, bro. Oh my god. The stuff that you have to get up to. Man, imagine going out like that. That's the worst way. That's the worst way I can imagine being killed, man, honestly. What I like about this channel is and is extremely underrated is that each as is that each, for each information you give, whether it's a metric or American system, it has the equivalent that you that where you don't have to constantly think about what is what i hate it when that happens while refueling my jet fighter <laughs> this is a really interesting channel though it does have some really interesting topics and yeah this really did answer questions that i was asking and it goes to show how dangerous it is obviously just based off how it looks i could assume it's dangerous but yeah situations where it still goes wrong and all that stuff but yeah hopefully you enjoyed this reaction if you want more of the stuff let me know in the comments and yeah until next time like subscribe peace